Understanding the Higgs boson by Jonathan Gardner, based on unveiling the Higgs boson, Higgs boson to students by Giovanni Organtini. I'm gonna go fast, so hold on to your horses. So the first thing we know is that in an electric field, a charged particle uh, has mass is QV plus uh, epsilon naught over two times the electric field squared uh, over that volume that we're interested in. So if we wanna look at the, the small u, which is basically, you know, big U divided by the volume, then we get the charge density times the potential plus epsilon naught over two uh, times E squared. And so this, there, there really is energy stored in an electric field, just the fact that the electric field exists. And also we have some source particle that causes the electric field that interacts with the potential of that same field. And so this is a neat little way to describe energy densities. Um, gravity has the same kind of thing. Um, the magnetism does the same kind of thing. But when we go to add in the, the additional energy caused by the mass, or rather the mass density to point, Einstein gave us E equals mc squared. This additional energy is doesn't follow the same model that gravity and magnetism follow and electricity follow. So we're going to introduce a new field. Hopefully it'll give us this term. And if, if, if the math works out, then this should describe the way the universe really works with mass. And so the new field we're going to use, we're going to use the symbol phi. It has potential capital phi. Um, and so we'd write it out. So u equals the charge per unit volume times the potential plus uh, epsilon naught over two electric field squared um, plus, so the phi uh, is gonna have some source particle that's gonna interact with it, the potential and it's going to interact with the electric field. We'll use a constant G here. We don't know what that is yet. And the field is also going to interact with itself with some G prime. And for reasons that that won't really make everything clear, we're going to introduce a new term, uh, phi to the fourth. And this will, if, if we don't introduce this term, then things will get weird. So um, this is nice and all. Um, when you look at this component, if G prime is negative, which we're gonna assume it's gonna be, um, then you get a, a graph. So G prime phi squared plus phi to the fourth. And as we change phi, so it starts off at zero and then it's gonna drop down and then it's gonna pick up. Okay, so the minimum energy of the field is not found when the field is zero, but when the field is some value of phi naught. So that's the minimum energy. Now, wh why is that important? Well, if we, if we think of a vacuum as the thing where nothing is, where there's no fields, there's no charges, there's no masses, then that's not really the right way to think of a vacuum. Really, a vacuum is where you can't extract energy anymore. It's at the bottom, the minimum energy. And so in that case, if, if we use a field like this, then the minimum energy has to have some of this Higgs field. So this field has to exist, has to be non-zero. So um, we're gonna break apart phi. We're gonna say that's equal to the minimum energy plus this uh, eta field. And so we're gonna call these, um, this one is the vacuum field. That's what this field does in a vacuum. And this is the Higgs field. That's what this field does in presence of, of uh, different particles. So uh, rewriting everything into one big equation, we get uh, energy density is equal to charge density times the potential plus epsilon naught over two times the electric field squared plus this um, new kind of charge density times the uh, potential, which we have to rewrite as the potential in a vacuum plus the potential due to eta. And then we add in the term for the interaction between the field and the electric field. So E times phi naught plus phi, uh, I'm sorry, eta. And now we add in the, squ the squares and the, um, the, the, the fourth power. So we have phi naught plus eta squared plus phi naught plus eta to the fourth power. Okay, so analyzing this. So phi naught is a constant. It's the it's the the field strength at minimum energy. Okay. Um, so now we have when we only have mass and nothing else is going on, we have this. We have this minimum at the minimum energy in a vacuum. If we have mass, we have the term that we can equate to mc squared 
over the unit volume. So we have A over unit volume times phi naught is equal to mc squared over unit volume. And so we can calculate that A is just mc squared over that um, vacuum potential. And the mass, on the other hand, is equal to A times the vacuum potential divided by c squared. Okay, So this gives us that m mc squared term with this field with, with using the same symmetry pretty much that we've used for the other kinds of fields that we've talked about. Now the interesting thing is if you look at this one, if you just have an electric field and nothing else, you're at the vacuum, so you just have an electric field, then this term would basically say the electric field behaves like it has mass, right? Since we know that's not the case, we just set g equals to zero. So that term falls off the face of the earth. Now let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's write out these polynomials in their full beautiful form. So we have g prime of phi naught squared plus phi naught eta, two of these, plus eta squared. And then we have phi naught to the fourth plus four, phi naught to the third eta, plus six, phi naught squared, eta squared, plus four more phi to naught eta cubes, plus eta to the fourth. Now, looking at this, these two terms are constants, right? And as we know that with energy, you can add or subtract any constants you want, as long as you do it all over space, and it doesn't really change anything. So we can ignore these terms. Um, this term is interesting. This is the vacuum field interacting with the Higgs field. So there's some interaction there. And there's the Higgs field interacting with itself. Now, all of these other terms can be rewritten as just multiplications of these, right? So phi cubed eta is, you know, the you know, this thing times that thing. This one is this thing times itself. This one is this thing times that thing. And this one is this times itself. So anyway, there you go. So making the assumption that this field exists, uh, that it behaves in a certain way, that this G prime constant is negative, we get all of this. We get a new theory to explain why things have mass and how things behave. Thank you for your time.